hello everybody welcome or welcome back to my channel it's your girl Whitney and today I'm coming at you guys with a different series today I'm coming at you guys with a little bit of a story time of when I used to be a substitute teacher now I'm not gonna sit here and be like oh it was the most rewarding experience in the world I know that there's a lot of teachers out there that love their job and love what they do but I'm not one of them right like I'm just gonna keep it honest with you guys I have to be 1000% honest I did not love being a substitute teacher and so today I'm going to create a whole series about the time that I was a substitute teacher and why I did not enjoy it. So I think for people to be in that position, they have to have a lot of patience. I don't have a lot of patience <laughs> so me it was just a recipe for disaster. Like there is so much going on that I'm not going to disclose today that I think you guys would enjoy and so we're gonna have multiple videos I think it's gonna be a collection of like seven to ten videos to be honest with you because I've been I worked there for three months and I've been through some stuff now today in this video there wasn't a lot of stuff going on it was just being welcomed into a new world so if you're interested in what I am going to talk about today about being a substitute teacher in middle school and high school then keep on watching so initially, before I became a substitute teacher, I was going through a period where I was unemployed for six months. And so I was apolo apologizing. I was applying to a whole bunch of jobs that, you know, I thought that I could do. I've been applying to mail carrier jobs. I was applying to like essential working jobs because there was a lot of things that was needed in 2020. If you guys know what was going on, everybody knows what was going on throughout this worldwide panorama, right? So me i was like okay i gotta make money because my savings is getting low i have to pay my bills and i don't want to put it all on my mom because my mom was a nurse and so she was gonna have to end up paying my bills if i didn't hurry up and get a job now she ended up paying one month of my bills but thankfully i got a job in the meantime so that way i can not only pay for my own bills but also save up some money because i mean who you need to save up some money so not only was I going on a whole bunch of websites to apply to different jobs, I was also going on this site called Upwork where it was kind of like a freelancing job, not job, but freelancing website so that way you can offer up your services. I got nothing from Upwork, I got nothing from a whole bunch of jobs for a long period of time. Like I was applying to like 50 jobs a day. I'm telling you like I really don't play when it comes to my money and I was applying and applying and applying and people were calling I was getting interviews but nobody was hiring and so I was on the fence where I was just kind of like well I wasn't on the fence but I was on this sort of area where I was like if you don't want me don't call me it was getting very irritating and I was at the point to where I was just kind of like you know what I'm just going to have to apply to serving jobs because like I didn't want to go back to serving but I was applying for those jobs anyways right and so I got to the point to where I started applying to restaurant jobs now even the restaurant jobs weren't even calling for me because I was overqualified so I had this problem of being overqualified and then I had this problem where it was like the need for jobs or need for workers but not in the jobs that I was looking for and so I come across this posting where it is kind of like an instructional assistant so I apply and I'm just kind of like you know what okay I think it's okay to be working with kids like I don't I've worked with kids before I used to be a tutor it was fun so I was like okay so this is gonna be no different right now I just want to make a disclaimer and say working with one to three kids at a time is completely different than working with a class of like 20 completely different I don't know why I thought it was going to be the same so for this day I end up applying and I think like a week later I get this email that's kind of like welcome aboard X Y and Z we are gonna need this this that and the third from you and I'm looking at it like what did I apply to and so I'm scrolling down I'm looking at the email and I'm like okay so this is for the instructional assistant job I guess I got it and so I hit up my friends and I'm like does this mean I got the job and they're like I mean it looks like you got the job and I was like but I didn't have an interview nobody called me nobody said anything to me I just got an email and I think that was the first thing that I should have known that they were needing a lot of people because 
they just hired me like literally I sent in the application and I was hired so I got a couple email correspondence with the recruiter and they were like yeah you you know you got the job you have the criteria we love your resume you know you got it and so now I want you to choose what school you're gonna go to what specific job you want and also I want you to know that this is gonna be full-time but you can also be a floater X Y and Z right and so I choose the job that I applied for because there was other positions that was like a um, I don't know like a health aide or a gym person or um, special needs specialist there was like a level four and a level five I was like you know what I don't have any experience with special needs kids I am okay with the gym however they didn't really have a lot of positions for the gym so I was like I'll stick with you know the instructional assistant and those pays varied between the um, different requirements that was needed so some jobs was like 10 75 an hour 11 13 15 and so on right and so for this job I was going to be an instructional assistant now I'm going to put if I can find it I am going to put the description of the job on the screen let's see if I can find it or one like it so this is the job description right because I don't want to put the immediate I'm not gonna put the job description on here because I don't want anybody to find it and know what job I'm talking about but basically what they're saying is this is what they say this company is a staffing agency that puts people in different positions to help with teachers right we are looking for a functional and professional classroom assistant working in these schools. We are in for an immediate need. We are looking for a friendly and approachable person to support our students and teachers in any educational environment. The duties of this position will include day-to-day -day activities, um, assisting teachers in administration, preparing instructional materials, um, assisting in presenting instructional materials for the faculty supervising students, and assisting with instructional and non-instructional activities I and then that was it right and at the bottom it says you know another related task as as assigned you know which is regular and then they tell you the benefits of working for them right so this job is full-time so I'm talking to the person and I tell them what school I would like I go to I choose a high school because I'm like mm, I could probably connect more with people who are closer to my age even though they're not close to my age but whatever right like I was like let me not go to a middle school let me go to like a high school and so I get assigned to the school and I'm going in for my first day after applying after you know getting the job on the spot after sending in everything that it needs that I need to send I am finally starting my first day I'm happy I'm excited I'm like yes now I can finally pay my own bills I like I am just set right like I am relieved so I walk into the school this is a high school and I keep dropping my pen and I go into the front office because that's where I'm told to go you know after I take my temperature and I sign the waiver I'm like hi I'm the new instructional assistant my name is Whitney I'm unsure on where to go but I was instructed to come to the front desk and so they're like oh okay let me go get the administrator so that way they can talk to you about what you will be doing because I don't know where I'm supposed to go in my mind I'm like okay I'm just gonna go wherever it is that I am needed and so also I forgot to mention I also signed up not only to be um, an instructional assistant so I'm thinking that I'm going to help the teachers with their day-to-day -day, assist the teachers with whatever they're trying to do so in my mind I'm like oh I'm probably gonna be grading right like oh I'm probably gonna be watching the kids when they need to go off or when they're out I'm probably gonna be a substitute right and then I also was like I'm okay with being an ISS substitute because they needed ISS people so I was like okay that's cool right like I'm happy for that and so while I'm in the front desk waiting for the other administrator we're gonna call this lady miss miss B because I don't know I don't remember her name at all but she was really nice right so we're gonna call her miss B miss B comes to approach me and I'm like hi how are you doing today X Y and Z she's like hi Whitney let's go over here let's just um, wait a second because you're a little bit too early and we're just gonna you know get you set up for everything right we're gonna get you a name tag X Y and Z so I go into her office we're sitting down she offers me a bottle of water I say yes because why not and she's like you know what I am really happy that you know you're doing this sort of job because we don't get a lot of young people in here you know wanting to you know help out and I was like oh you know it's no worry you know I love to help out wherever I can and you know I'm okay with kids so I didn't think that this was going to be that big of an issue and then she goes on to say you know it takes a really strong person to be working with these kids you know you have to have a lot of patience and so 
this job is not for everybody so I just really want to commend you for you know going ahead and doing this sort of work because we don't get a lot of young people doing this work we don't get a lot of patient people doing this work and our turnaround is high and I would in my head I'm like why would you tell me that the turnaround is high because it makes me it makes it sound like at the time that the administrators were the issue not necessarily substituting the children or there was a lot of bad kids in that school but that school wasn't known to be very bad it was like it was like rich kids who were trying to be gangster but at the same time they had no backbone right so like I've been around those kids before I knew those kids from when I went to high school right so I was just like I mean it's whatever they're not everyone wants to say oh they're more than what they really are and it just wasn't that big of a deal to me and then she continues talking she says you know what you really you must really have a big heart to be working with these kids because you know again it's not easy and also this job is not for everybody and then I'm just in my mind I'm just kind of like I mean I guess teaching really isn't for everybody but it's you know when people go to get a degree they you know sign up for these different things you know and in my head I'm just kind of thinking like why does she keep repeating that but we continue and I wait for my assignment that's what they call it you go into the front office and basically you're assigned to different positions because you are supposed to substitute right at least that's what I thought so I go into the office and she says okay they're ready for you let's go and so initially I'm like okay because like, I was early and so I was like and then the bell rang while I was also in the office so I was just kind of thinking you know aren't I kind of late you know at this point because there's a bunch of kids in a classroom that doesn't have a teacher and that's where I'm supposed to be but that's not the case so I follow this other woman Miss B takes me to another woman who we're just gonna call Miss C and Miss C brings me down the hallway and she says this is the kids that you're going to take care of she opens the door and three adult women come to me and they're like oh my god we're so thankful that we have some help and I look around in the classroom and the classroom is smaller but they're sectioned off from everybody else because this is a classroom with kids who have special needs right and so initially that's not what I signed up for so I was kind of in my head I was kind of like why would they put me to help out special needs kids when I don't have that experience right and so in my head I'm like I don't know if this is a good idea because I've never worked with anyone with special needs, like never worked with anyone with special needs. And so I'm like, well, okay, so it's probably not that much different, right? Like you just have a little bit extra things to do. And that's basically what it was like. You just have a little bit of more extra things to do, which isn't even that big of a deal, right? So I walk in the classroom, we have, we have, we have a plethora of adults in there, but the most the three women who are more important to this story, semi, not really, we're just going to give them a name, right? We're going to call one of them Jamie. We're going to call Jamie. She was an older woman who's been there for a long time, who was in the same position as me. She um, retired and everything, and then now she, she, she still wanted to help kids, which was great. I love her story. Then we have the main lady who's basically the boss of everybody. Like, she's the teacher in the whole class. We're going to call her um, Miss Brooke right we're gonna call there's Jamie Brooke and then the last lady who was a special needs specialist actually like what had the qualifications to work with special needs kids and we're gonna call her I hate the name Tracy we're gonna call her I hate the name Tiffany we're gonna call her Rebecca so we have Jamie Brooke and Rebecca I come in everyone greets me and one of the kids stands up and they're all so happy they're like hey how, how are you guys and they're like my name is so and so my name is this my name is that and i thought it was the cutest experience right because i walk in and then they're all happy it's it's different right and i wasn't expecting everybody to be needing the help even though i should have when the admin miss i forgot what i named her but miss b when she was just like you know we really need the help there's a lot of turnaround i guess i should have known that everyone would have been relieved to have existence if everyone keeps leaving so i go in i sit down i get acclimated to the classroom i learn all of the different kids and what their personal struggles are why they're in the class why they're in the special needs class and so this is where it kind of um i just want to make it clear that this is not day one right this is day one of our substitute chronicles day one is not <laughs> what prompted me to make a substitute chronicles i wish i'm getting ahead of myself 
but I'll say this at the end, okay? So as I'm sitting in the classroom, I'm starting to get a little bit overwhelmed by the tasks that I'm assigned to do. And not necessarily assigned to do, but more so when I'm, when I'm shadowing the other people and I'm learning what it is that I have to do, I'm kind of in my mind, I'm like, man, I don't have the skills for this. I'm kind of uncomfortable. Maybe like with time, I can, you know, get acclimated to it, but this is really not what I signed up for. And in my head, I'm just kind of thinking like, I'm kind of, I'm scared, I'm apprehensive, but I'm also like, okay, but you still gotta try it with me. And at the same time, I'm like, yo, these people lie to me. They purposely were vague in the job description because they knew a lot of people wouldn't sign up to work for you know this particular position which is sad but it's also truthful because one you have to have like the woman said a good heart to work with the special needs kids you also have to have a lot of patience if you don't have patience you're going to do more harm to them than good so you should not be in there now for me specifically i had a lot of you know like i had a lot of patience because it's just like why am i gonna be nasty to them that's rude so on my very first day I get in the classroom they show me the kid that I'm going to be assigned to so my assignment that I thought meant right I thought my assignment was different places that I was going to be in the school itself so I'll be a substitute over here or I'll be an ISS substitute or I might help with the administrators no your assignment is a child so my assignment was a child whose name we're gonna call Mac we're gonna call him Mac so I meet Mac and Mac is high school age. He is, I believe, 16 years old. He's a 16 year old dude, almost six feet. He was nonverbal and he also had, I don't know the specific term, so I don't, I'm not even gonna put it out there, but he was nonverbal, right? And so the way that you had to communicate with him was with stickers. And so I was like, okay, so this is gonna be okay, right? Like, it's not that big of a deal. And then the teachers come to me and they're like, you know, when he doesn't want certain things, he can kind of get, you know, agitated. And I'm like, you know, that makes sense. That's just everyday life, right? And so overall, what I learned from being in this, and day one is that working with special needs kids it's just like working with any other kid right they just have different steps that need to be taken and you can't mess up a lot of them you can't mess up their routine so i was like oh this is perfect like you learn quickly what you need to do right like it's not a problem and so day one we're in the classroom i'm learning everybody and the problem comes here now it's time for all of the kids to switch into a different classroom because they do certain subjects in classroom A and certain subjects in classroom B. We migrate to classroom B and I meet a whole set of people. They say hi to me. I sit in the back. I learn. I am sitting with Mac, you know, and he's doing a good job, right? But then, so me and Rebecca are sitting in the back with our kid Mac because I'm supposed to be learning how Mac, um, does his day to day, right? And, Rebe and I'm shadowing Rebecca. So we're sitting there and all of a sudden, there's a kid in the back who we are going to call, we're gonna call him Zane. There's a kid in the back, Zane, who's sleeping. So as we're sitting in the back of this classroom, all I see in the corner of the room is feet. So I see that Zane is sleeping and I'm wondering, you know, why do they have this one kid that's just sleeping over there? That, you know, doesn't really make sense. But I'm like, you know what? I don't know anything about this. So maybe, you know, he just was tired and they just let him sleep. All right, so we're going through the um, the subjects. We're learning everything. I help out the kids who ever need help, you know, with whatever problems that we're going through. They read a story, etc. Then it's time for a break because they have this, the way that the schedule went that there was breaks between each subject, but it wasn't long breaks. I think it was like 10 minute breaks, right? During this break, Zane wakes up and immediately everyone just starts tensing up. And I'm like, you know what's going on and so this girl in front of me turns around she's another instructional assistant and she's like listen you have your name tag on put it in your shirt and I'm like okay and then she's like you know you have a ponytail because I had braids at the time she was like make sure you keep your ponytail up because he will grab it and in my head I'm like is she talking about Mac like is Mac gonna grab my hair why is he gonna grab my hair and so she's telling me everything. She was like, hide your tags, don't have long hanging things. He's very aggressive. He, he's just overall aggressive. And I'm like, Mac? And she was like, no, Zane. And she points, and she points at a kid who is literally the same built as Mac. And he's walking around the classroom. He's doing whatever it is that he needs to do. He wants to go somewhere. And if he doesn't, he starts swinging, he starts hitting. And so I'm like, oh, okay, so this is what they're talking about by they're saying that they're aggressive. And immediately in my head, I'm like, 
yeah these these people that put up this job post should have been more specific because I was like now this is misleading and this is wrong because you're not telling people exactly what they're going to do you're not being honest and so I was starting to get mad because I was like hmm if I knew that I was going to be in this position I would not have applied because not only do I not have the experience for it but it puts me in a predicament to where I could do something wrong and I don't want to do anything wrong I don't want to scar a child for the rest of my life for the rest of their life like I was like this is not what I signed up for and so Zayn is going around the room he is honestly swinging at everybody hitting people because he's trying to go pee and then he gets to pee and then he comes back and then he ends up going back to sleep so i'm like okay zane's no big deal right like okay like he did all he gets up he does what he wants to do and then he goes back and sits down so i'm like okay so that wasn't that serious right like he didn't get close to me everyone was kind of monitoring him there was another big guy in there that was an external assistant that was monitoring him as well but then we get to the point of mac where i feel like mac saw Zayn's actions it was like I'm gonna emulate that because he got exactly what he wanted right so during this next subject all of a sudden things were not going right for Mac and Rebecca now again Mac is the kid that I was assigned to Rebecca was the one that I was shadowing because she was showing me what I needed to do so we had a poster board where you had the stickers on there and he Mac had to put the stickers to the correct fruit or the correct symbol etc right like matching things and hand-eye coordination to help so he's putting it on there i'm talking to him i'm assisting him or whatever and so is rebecca but rebecca takes something out of his hand and he didn't like that so all of a sudden max starts throwing himself on the floor and he starts whining he starts screaming because he's not getting what he wanted and in my head i'm like but mac like he didn't get what he wanted before and he didn't act like this so like I, in my head i'm kind of learning like hmm um, is this because he saw what Zayn was doing or is this typically how he acts and then all of a sudden he tries to hit Rebecca now Rebecca is taller than me she's about 5'10 but she's also the same build as me right and she's fighting off the 6 foot 16 year old who is um, very heavy set right and so he's a bigger dude and she's fighting him off and he's coming at her full force all of a sudden the whole classroom stops and we have instructional assistants we have the big dude who was taking care of Zane he stops taking care of Zane to come and assist Rebecca we have another person who comes to assist Rebecca the teacher comes to assist Rebecca like and then they almost the security came to the door but they came late so like they were coming in to try to get him to calm down because he wanted to eat he wanted to chill he wanted to not do his work this is all on my first day and so I'm sitting there like so I'm sitting here right Zayn not Zayn Mac is sitting here and Rebecca is sitting here so we're all sitting at this one table the size of this like I'm sitting right here and they're probably on the other end and so while Mac is attacking her I try not to back up because I didn't want to be rude but at the same time I was just kind of like what do I do I don't know what to do I don't know how to use my voice in a way to calm down the situation I was like frozen a little bit because I've never seen anything like this before and so I'm sitting there and I'm like this is different I was like maybe I cannot be in this sort of situation and so I just kind of sit there as they're fighting each other well I don't want to say fighting each other but as Mac is fighting Rebecca they end up calming him down they say come on you know inside voice let's just work on this and then you get to do whatever you want right so we sit down, we chill, and Mac chills. I was, <laughs> then everyone looked at me and was like, you good? I was like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> and so after that first day, I, you know, I worked from like eight to three and I was kind of like overwhelmed as hell. Like to put it, to put it frankly, I was overwhelmed as hell. Cause I was like, this is the kid that I'm assigned to. And what if he attacks me and I don't know what to do? I don't like, they were, they weren't fighting him off, but they were trying to restrain him in a way to where he wouldn't get hurt and they wouldn't get hurt. Of course they weren't hitting him, but like he was hitting them. And I'm like, how are you supposed to restrain someone who is twice your size coming at you full force? And so that's the kid that I had. And I was like, I don't know if I really want to do this. So I ended up emailing the recruiter and I was like yo y'all lied <laughs> like you didn't say that I was going to be doing this I don't have the skills for this I would like to be moved and so 
after that I ended up spending two weeks with the um, class that I was at initially on the first day so the first day was that was just that and throughout my two weeks I learned that you know this is not a regular thing this happens every now and then but it's really not that serious and so while I was working with Jamie Brooke and Rebecca Mac Zane all of the kids while I was well Zane was a regular aggressor but that was the only problem everyone kind of had in a sense and so while I was working with these kids for these two weeks I thoroughly enjoyed my time. I loved it. I loved the scheduling. I loved how it was kind of like laid back. I love how funny the kids were. Like everything was amazing. And I hated myself for emailing this recruiter because once I left that school, once I left that high school, I got moved over to a middle school and things literally plummeted. I should have stayed at the high school I should have stayed in that classroom with Brooke, Rebecca, Jamie, all of them. I should have stayed because this is where the story gets annoying. Now you guys are just going to have to wait for that different story, but I just want to set up the whole foundation of what's been going on or what has went on because you have to get the background to know the rest of everything else. You have to know where I started and where I ended up. So basically what I learned from working with special needs kids or what I learned from being a substitute on those two weeks was not only was it fun, not only was it actually rewarding, I actually gained a lot of patience with working different kids and not only that but it gave me exposure. What I learned is that working with special needs kids is no different than working I've said, I think I've said that a thousand times, but it's no different than working with other kids because everyone has a different routine. Everyone has a different schedule. They have different requirements, X, Y, and Z, right? And it's, I just think, I don't know. I don't know how else to explain it. It's just like, just because this kid's requirement isn't helping them using bathroom doesn't mean that they're any better than this kid's requirement who needs help using the bathroom. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? So me, myself, and I, if I ever get in a position to where I, you know, have to substitute, I am not going anywhere else with any other kids. I am only staying right here, going back to that one job and staying there for the rest of my life if needed because y'all just got to stay tuned. So thank you for joining me today. I hope, I know that this was kind of like uneventful, but I wanted to tell you guys this little bit of a story in our first day one of the Substitute Chronicles because it literally was <laughs> the greatest week like I think I was in this class for two weeks because I said something to the stupid recruiter and I should have never said anything to her I loved this class and I should have stayed with this class and so if I learned anything is give things time and also exposure or something that's different isn't a bad thing so hopefully this story encouraged you to try something new, try different things, try a new job that you may love at the end of the day, and also to give things a chance. You know, don't set yourself short and think that maybe you can't handle anything because I gained in those short two weeks, or I think it was a week, I don't remember. But in that short period of time, I learned a lot of skills and I had a lot of fun. Stay tuned for day two. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on your post notifications so you never miss when I post a new video. Thank you guys for joining me today. Day two of this Substitute Chronicles is going to come out fairly soon because this, because this segment was so slightly uneventful. I just wanted to get this out of the way and let you guys know what was going on. Now the next video, you guys are going to get some tea, some drama, some shit spilled because kids are a trip <laughs> and you just got to stay tuned. So thank you guys for joining me today. That's the third time I said that and I'll see you next time.